Jesus is taken away from them. He's nailed on the cross, but prior to that, kicked, punched, ridiculed, spat on, whipped, nailed on the cross, fully naked. The most painful thing, and I pray no one goes through it, because this thing can be very fatal very dangerous the most dangerous thing anyone can ever go through is disappointment and especially that disappointment that comes when all your hope has been put on this person and that person that you would never ever have dreamt of one day letting you down, walking away from you or denying you. And before you know it, the greatest shock of your life, the person whom you have hanged all your life upon, walks away and disappears from you in a blink of an eye. In this disappointment, it is unbearable. Some people, it comes so hard on them, they end up taking their life away. Disappointment. The number one thing disappointment destroys is self-confidence. Now, I want you to pay attention, please. See, these words are very important. The number one thing disappointment destroys is self-confidence. Let me tell you this. If you do not have self-confidence, you cannot keep your faith. I'll repeat it again. If you do not have self-confidence, you cannot keep nor protect your faith. Because why? Why is that? Because when we lose self-confidence, we become afraid. Fear engulfs us and the moment fear engulfs a Christian faith disappears King David said as long as I had faith I spoke the day I lost my faith I was silent So what did Simon say to the other disciples? Listen, men, colleagues, friends. I am destroyed. I have lost my faith. The one I hanged everything on is dead. The one I believed is the Messiah is dead. The one I left everything behind me and followed him is gone. And this can happen in any relationship, regardless what color of that relationship is. It could be husband and wife. It could be a father and a son. It could be a mother and a daughter. It could be siblings. It could be cousins. It could be friends. When they walk away from you, It's very painful. So out of frustration, out of hopelessness, out of fear, not knowing what else to do, Simon said, I'm going fishing. Do you want to come? He wasn't going fishing. When I am so broken, When I have hit rock bottom, am I going to have that kind of a, a heart to go and have fun? I'm destroyed. What fun? When you are so hurt, you don't want to see no one. You don't want to talk to no one. You don't want to hear no one. You don't want to know no one nor anything. Someone lost. Just threw a couple of words in the air 
not knowing what he's talking about. Let's go fishing. It happened to be all the rest of the disciples were in the same boat, in the same situation as Simon. They said, oh, well, we're dead, dead. You know what? Let's go to that big sea. One day we were crossing that sea and strong wind came and big waves came and the water started entering the boat and we were about to sink. You know, maybe we go there and never come back. See, because when you lose that hope, when you lose that faith, you want to die. You don't want to live anymore because there is nothing to look forward to. There is nothing that mean, means anything anymore. So what am I living for? Nothing. Therefore, might as well go. So I'm going to go to the sea in the hope I will never come back. This is my last trip. Lord, you left me. I am hurt. I am disappointed. I thought it was the Messiah. Was my mind playing a trick on me? Or were you the greatest magician far from you that has tricked us so, so big way that we did not realize you were lying? We thought it was you. I don't want to live anymore. So let's go and hopefully die in the Sea of Galilee. All night long, they caught nothing. Of course, because they didn't go fishing. <laughs> what fishing? They're all dead, destroyed. But they didn't know, they didn't know any, anything else. What else to do? Don't we go through those moments? I don't know what else to do. I just want someone to come and tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Even with the air conditioning, I don't know what to do sometimes. Put it up, it's too hot. Put it down, it's too cold. <laughs> So we don't know. So they went all night long just hoping they die. What fishing? And in the early morning, this man shows up at the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Isn't it incredible? Isn't it incredible? If you want to know something about the Lord Jesus, let me tell you, my dear friends and my beloved children, the Lord Definitely he comes, but he comes when we thought it's over. When we gave up, when we said it's done, when we said there is no more hope, when we said it is the end, I'm finished. The Lord comes, you know why he comes then? Because he wants you and me and all of us to come to this knowledge, to come to this realization, to come to this insight that you see, I don't want you to forget the moment when I put you in that corner and you wave the white flag saying, I cannot do it anymore and knowing that no one else can do it for you anymore. There is no one that can come to your rescue, neither you nor anyone else whom you had thought they were there, your support, your saviors. When, it, when the Lord put you in that situation, you came to this realization, neither you nor any power can get you out of that impossible situation. That's when God shows up to make you understand, number one, he exists. And number two, he is the only one that can help you. Next time, when the Lord brings you out of that situation and you go through another difficult time, don't put your hope on people. You better put your hope on God. And let God help you, whether directly or indirectly, but either way, it is God. 
Life is a lesson. And so many lessons there are. And we need to learn to understand.